We live in a world where we think everyone has it great. Where everyone has a better life than us, better homes than us, better vacations. And we start comparing ourselves to other people. So when it comes to marriages, let me say one thing. Don't compare your marriage. Don't look at other marriages. Han Akhtala, the well-known storyteller, says someone said that someone once asked them, how come the only people who are really happy are the people I don't know well? Everyone's life, everyone's marriage and children look perfect to the outsider. But once you get to know the person, you find that they also have problems. No one is without problems in this world. Don't do comparative studies because every marriage has its challenges. Everything may be perfect at this moment, but chances are they went through tough times in the past or unfortunately will go through bumpy times in the future. That's life. I've seen this happen to many of my friends over the years. People have, lives are roller coasters. You're up, you're down, you're up, you're down. So don't think that someone has better than you. You never know. And here's a cute joke. If the grass looks greener on the other side of the fence, it's because they take bare, better care of it. So let's continue about how it's important not to compare our marriages. Frida and Murray seemed to be an ideal couple. They were the parents of six lovely children. When they married off the last of their children, they announced that they had stayed together for the sake of their children. But now they were splitting up. Apparently they just stayed together just to help their kids get married. Everyone was flabbergasted. The parents of the children who married into the family were shocked and they all felt fooled. They had all believed that their children were marrying into a very stable family. What was the farthest thing from the truth? What some stable, was the, were, they, were these people stable that their kids married? Or were the children also suffering as they lived with their parents? Was there peace and tranquility or fighting and frustration? Who can judge? What are they doing behind closed doors? Meanwhile, despite six children in common, they decided to split up and went their separate ways. So you never know what's going on. It may seem like it's a perfect household and a perfect home and there could be bad things going on behind closed doors. Ma Jealousy is detrimental to one's state of well-being. People who are jealous are never happy. No matter how much you have, someone will always have more and you'll always you'll enjoy what you have. Don't envy another person's position or appearance, education, job, reputation, talent and family. Even if the other person had less, it wouldn't make you any happier. Don't look at other couples and say, he's earning a better living, she's keeping herself slimmer, their kids are better adjusted, and so forth. You don't know. You don't know what's going on behind closed doors. Everyone, hopefully, is as beautiful as it looks, but it may be that one day you'll learn that, unfortunately, his business is on the brink of collapse, God forbid, or his wife is anorexic, or their son has been diagnosed with leukemia, God forbid, and you've wasted your precious life being jealous of these people. Pirkei Avos, which is ethics of the fathers, relates that a happy person is one who is happy with his lot. Ezehu Ashir, Samech Bechalko, who is a wealthy person? He was happy with what God gave them. Happy, satisfied, appreciative individuals create a better marriage. The sixth bracha or blessing given to the couple at the wedding under the canopy is Sameach Tesamach Reim Ahuvim. We ask you, Hashem, to bring joy and gladness to this young couple in front of us. Like he brought happiness and celebration to the first couple in the history of the world, that being Adam and Chava. Gladden these beloved companions, Hashem, as you gladdened your creations in the Garden of Eden. Because Adam and Chava were the only human beings in the existence in the world, they never doubted that they were each other's beshert or soulmates. They were never envious of anyone else's marriage and therefore were able to focus and appreciate the relationship God had given them. And so that bracha is put there by the rabbis as if they teach us when a man marries a woman in 2020, he has to act as if he's like Adam. Adam has only one woman to look at in the world. You, my dear Yosef, or my dear Tzadok, or my dear Yehuda, have to think that the wife that you're marrying is the only wife there is. And you, similarly, you, you Miriam, or Yocheved, and Naomi, the husband you're marrying is the only husband that exists. You have to act as if you're Adam and Chava, that you're the only two occupants of this world and there's no one else to look at or be jealous of. A marriage cannot rely on a husband earning a certain amount of income or a wife remaining gorgeous or kids being perfect. It's built on deeper things. It's built on, 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 com on, on more complex, substantial connections. It can only rely on a couple who has the right attitude of being satisfied and grateful for what they have. Many times people are unable to earn what they had hoped to earn or expenses are greater than they estimated. A person may age with worse wrinkles than they expected. A marriage must withstand change, 
must withstand aging, must withstand loss of looks, loss of hair, loss of hopes, and a lifetime of disappointments. Life can be extremely challenging. We as couples must rise to the challenge, accept and adapt, and always look at the beauty and potential of our own marriages.